I want to talk a little bit more about promises and some different ways that you can approach them and use them in your code. So here I've got just a basic promise as uh, defined in the previous example. So you're declaring new promise. P1 is going to be the result of that promise. So it's going to contain this new promise, the promise object. Inside the promise object there's our function which receives resolve and reject as the two callbacks. Inside here we're saying if true, so this is always going to work, resolve and it passes back a string. So this P1, as soon as we make reference to this, it's going to have this resolve inside of it. It's going to know that the status of this promise is that it's been resolved. The promise has been kept. Uh, the promise was not rejected because, well, it's in the else condition that's never going to run. Now, we can also, in other ways, contain these promise rejects or responses. So if I create another variable here, p2, I can just say promise.resolve. There we go. This is just like if I had run a promise like this, new promise, and I come down to this point right here and call the reserve, uh, there's, sorry, the resolve. So promise resolve, that's going to be happening. P1 is going to be saying, oh, there was a promise, the promise was kept, it was resolved, and it's going to hold the re result of that. This is going to do the exact same thing. If you just say promise.resolve, this holds the result of that promise. Another way that you may come across this in code sometimes is instead of just being the promise object, sometimes it's a function. So p3 I'm declaring is going to be a function that is going to return the promise.resolve. And this can be any value at all inside of here. So this resolve, it can be a string, it can be a number, it can be a boolean, it can be another promise. It can even be something that would resolve as false if you were doing an if statement, so like null or undefined. That is still a resolved promise. So we've got all these different ways and then at some point else, some place further down in your code, if you were going to be using these values, we'd say p1.then inside of here, this is our function. So this has been resolved, so the then is going to we'll call it the result. That's a better name. So we've got our fat arrow function running and I'm just going to console.log p1 and then the result for p2 it would be the exact same thing so I just take this copy paste change p1 to p2 change the comment here there we go exact same thing it's working the same way this is a promise that has been resolved. So as soon as I call then, this has got the result in it, it fires it into the then. And for the other example, p3, because this is a function, the way I would get at the result of that one is run p3 dot then. And inside of then we'd have the results being passed into our arrow function console log. P3 result. Okay, so if I run this now, there we go. P1 is the first one resolved, P2 resolved, and those are the strings here P1 resolved, P2 resolved, P3 null. And just to demonstrate the reject one that it works the same way, P4 equal, and we'll say it's a function this time, just for the sake of argument, and reject with the string. Down here, if I say p4, call it as its function, dot then, this is going to do absolutely nothing because p4 was rejected, not resolved. There we go, and 
this should have a variable being passed in here. Even though this is never going to be used, we won't see this show up. Console.log before reject. run that. There we go. P4 was rejected. So this rejected got fired into the catch. So that's how you can use resolve and reject. These are keywords. These are methods that exist on the promise object and you can call them directly to use them in your code if you ever have to. And the two slightly different syntaxes. One is if it's a variable, the two if it's a function. And just remember to put the extra set of parentheses in there. And that's it.